Okay, reading Berserk and watching Berserk are two really different things to me. Sure, it's the same story in both of them, but the way they both convey mood through its art and music really makes it something you have to experience for yourself. Susumu Hirasawa does a really good job of bringing you into the world of Berserk, showing both its beauty and its horror. And guys, I am just gonna say it, this dude's a fucking mad lad. The shit he does, ooh, it, it makes my inner madman like smile with glee. And this dude's been around for a while. I hope you're hyped up for this because I know I am when I was writing it. Let's go. Susumu Hirasawa was born on April 2nd, 1954 in Adachi, Tokyo. Susumu was pretty much based as a kid. Based on what you may ask, well, for starters, around 5th grade, Susumu had a liking for instrumental and prog rock bands. After he was in his junior high school band, he thought, alright, I grinded enough, I've done my dues, I cleaned up enough mouthpieces to know where this is gonna lead me, I wanna do something cooler. So, he started his own progressive rock band called Mandrake, which was inspired by such bands as King Crimson and Ye- He was one of the few progressive bands in Japan, yet it wasn't very successful and Susumu was like, Okay, this isn't working out. Prog rock is cool and all, but... I don't know what this is, but it's kind of hot. So Susumu reformed Mandrake into P-Model in 1979. P-Model compared to Mandrake was way, way more well received, as it was more unconventional, being influenced by experimental rock and post-punk genres. Because of its rapid increase in fame, Susumu wasn't really a big fan of being famous. And I kind of get it, if I was making music for a long time and if it wasn't too popular, I feel like it would be a hollow victory. And that's no fun for anyone. Because of Susumu's constant changes throughout, his band was quite popular in the Japanese indie scene. In 2000, the band split up and everyone started doing their own thing. Um, around this point, Susumu was already like dabbling of being a solo act and he was experimenting with like psychology in his music. like using philosophies such as Carl Jung, George Orwell, and the idea of yin and yang to name a few. Susumu was a big fan of science fiction novels and just a big reader in general, which you can hear its influence in his music giving it way more depth. Susumu writes and sings the lyrics himself, and some of the lyrics are so deep that not even Rick and Morty fans can understand what they truly mean. You have to have a really high IQ to really appreciate Susumu Hirasawa. During an interview, Susumu states, I just like it when somebody describes my music as weird rock or weird techno. Surely this genre is hard to define in the music scene. Hence, if some rock music critic attempts to judge me and my music, all they would come up with is ambient music or music to take drugs to. The Japanese music scene doesn't help with introducing terms such as new age or transpersonality. I want to let my music reach a broader part of society, being music born from Japanese culture. And I think this is why I wanted to connect to the world that doesn't exist in the music scene. This dude was all about transcending himself constantly, going past his own limits with trying out so many different instruments and techniques. He constantly wanted to see what other cool stuff he could keep doing, and this led him to meet a variety of people and work with them. One person who was a huge fan of his work was fan of Idolmaster and the mangaka of Berserk, Kintaro Mura. This guy was like so hyped for Susumu to make his music in the anime, it was honestly kind of silly. When asked about his relationship with Mura, Susumu states, before the Berserk anime series started in Japan, Mr. Muir eagerly asked me to compose the soundtrack because he had been a listener of my music so that he thought there was a commonness in the nuance of his work in my music, and I thought so too. Not only TV anime, but generally big projects are involved in various rights, therefore it would be rare that the original writer's intention is accepted 100%. This time, however, Mr. Mura and the staff who understood him well solved various difficulties, and finally they could contact with me. Since then, the Berserk project and fans have come to an idea that my music is essential for Mr. Mura's works. And it really is, I don't think Berserk could have hit as hard as it did if it didn't have Susumi's music. I mean, take a look for yourselves and you'll see what I mean. This is what I lift to. 
the instruments really feel so ethereal with the use of its chorus, of which it's just mainly Susumu recording himself many times, combined with, like, the airy streams that, like, sound like bagpipes, if you gotta ask me. It just makes it a 10 out of 10. And that's only some of the pieces you'll hear. I'll put some links of Berserk music, which I think are cool, in the description. Mira was not the only person in the anime field who liked his work, as later on, Susumu started to compose music for Satoshi Khan, and like Mira, he was inspired by how Susumu created his works. Satoshi and Susumu became good friends, as they bounced off each other's creative energies quite well, and with that, Satoshi helped him see how a medium like anime could be seen as art. And what I kind of found funny was when Satoshi was like really sick and like terminally ill, Susumu went over to see him and they were bros for a while and like Satoshi and Susumu had like a nice conversation and at the end Satoshi apologized for not talking too much and you know what Susumu said to Satoshi right right on his dying bed? Please behave more like an invalid. I, I don't, dude, you, you're sick, it's okay. I, I, I laughed pretty hard. And I'm not gonna lie, that's just fucking savage. But that's honestly just the relationship they had. It's the type of friendship that even though somebody's suffering, they seek to ease the suffering of others, and I admired that. A gift Satoshi gave to Susumu was a prized rock, an iron pirate crystal. Susumu describes the rock as being like Satoshi himself. Minerals are scientific, but also have the power to instill a more spiritual worldview in those who look at them. For example, when viewed with cold reason, this is iron pyrite. It has a certain composition and its shape was formed over tens of thousands of years. Yet this stone also has something that can only be perceived with senses that are the opposite of scientific reason. Susumu's relationships with others really did help him evolve as a person. And as a musician, you can see that if you've ever been to his live shows in Japan. Shit gets wild. He does interactive performances with his audience and like the things he does are just so out there, like in the best way. He is spinning a wheel to make his own power for a soundboard. He uses electric harps for his leads. He is a one-man band who just gives no fucks and it makes perfect sense why he's so fucking cool in Japan. And like, the dude doesn't make shows, he makes experiences. Some cool facts about Susumu. He liked going to Thailand a lot. He made a lot of friends with trans people in the country and it was kind of inspired of how they sounded and even managed to get some performers in his music because he just liked how their different vocals it's it's weird but i like I, this is the stuff i live for trust me when you learn about bach being a drunk it's shit, shit gets good uh also he can't drink at all apparently he's like a really he's a super lightweight like a shot of beer will like knock him out which is hilarious but it adds more charm to him, and like another thing, uh, he he was really fond of like machines and stuff. He he saw himself as an engineer, which if you see his live shows, it kind of sh shows up for himself. Like he again spinning that wheel. You're an engineer in my book. All right, there's more stuff I missed about this guy, but this is a probably a good introduction to him. I had a lot of fun working on this essay, and I'm glad you guys are liking him. Oh, and also thanks for the 1K subs. I I, I appreciate you all. I, I just want you to know that. I'll keep making this stuff if you keep watching them. Uh, more stuff soon, I guess. Uh, if you want to find the link of, you know, the lecture I did, I'll, I'll put a link down there too. Okay, I, I love you. Okay, bye. I like this. This is cute. <laughs> <laughs>